Hey there, how's it going? Z-Man Attack here, and today we're going to be reviewing City of Brass for Nintendo Switch by developer and publisher Uppercut Games, set to release February 8th, 2019, and it's also available on PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. And this game is a blend of two genres being first-person perspective and roguelite. In this Arabian Nights inspired FPS roguelite, you choose between the role of six adventurers that come with their own weapons, equipment, and strengths and weaknesses which allows the player to get a feel for which style they prefer and suits them best. These six adventurers are the Thieving Fool, Vengeful Traveler, Spear-Wielding Soldier, Knife-Throwing Brigand, the Magical Hellion, and the Crossbow-Toting Revenant. When you first begin the game, you will only have access to the Fool and the Traveler. However, the other adventurers are earned through a ranking system that you gain progress through simply by playing the game. Collecting treasure and loot, upgrading weapons and armor via the Hellion, and level clear time all play a factor in this. Like many roguelites, this game proves to be a challenge with its one chance life system causing you to start from the beginning should you perish. However, this is nothing to worry about as your rank goes up regardless. There are also randomized potions of either positive or negative effects that are scattered about throughout the compounds, and they are optional. Some of these effects include localized thunderstorms that shock nearby enemies that are in your radius leaving them stunned, flying light daggers that continuously scatter from all directions of your character, and then there are some that can poison you, so it's definitely a gamble, especially when you first start the game. Thankfully, there is a helpful system that keeps record of all the items that you encounter or acquire, and it can be accessed in the pause menu at any time. The style of play varies by character, so I'll be referencing the Fool and the Traveler, who use a whip in the left hand and swords in the right. The combination of the two really works well and feels smooth when in transition, as you can not only whip enemies in their face and stun them for a setup attack, but you can also pull them towards you for a close quarter setup as well. You can collect treasure, grab throwable items, sweep enemies by the legs, disarm enemies, latch onto certain areas above and pull yourself up, and trigger traps with it as well. It's probably one of the best uses of whip mechanics I've seen in a game in years. Speaking of traps, you really have to keep an eye on them, as it was the main cause of my many deaths. The different enemy types and randomization of the level layouts will definitely keep you on your feet and keep your mind sharp as you figure out how to defeat or overcome certain situations. What also adds a nice touch is the developer's commitment to free updates that are added regularly and feature new areas, enemies, and so forth. Using either Joy-Cons in the grip or Pro Controller, the game feels very smooth in regards to input and everything you need is mapped in the most comfortable place. The movement and melee have a natural flow and balance from sprinting, sliding, jumping, vaulting, crouching, and etc. This does differ between characters with different layouts, so you really are encouraged to play as the new ones as you unlock them. As far as the visuals, this is another example of the recent Nintendo Switch games that make excellent use of the Unreal Engine's graphical capabilities and really captures the Arabian ambiance right through to the realistic ripples in the sand and highly detailed environments, items, weapons, character models, and so forth. Hitting the explosive vases and using the lanterns to throw at enemies that cause huge balls of flames look very realistic. Seeing this world of brass and gold with all the Arabian decor and the way that it's portrayed in this game really is a visual treat and scrumptious candy to the eyes. Sound effects are crisp, authentic, and strong, delivering an even more quality rich and immersive experience. The soundtrack hits the nail right on the head with this dramatic Arabian style and live orchestrated quality, which feels as if you're playing a part in an Arabian action film. Upon launch, there are no issues with equalization or mastering. The music definitely kicks it up a notch once you encounter enemies and engage in battle, then subsides and mellows out while you're exploring and looting. So in conclusion, City of Brass is an interestingly immersive game that puts a nice spin on the FPS roguelite genres. The game's controls are simple and straight to the point, with little to no learning curve, and the whip mechanics are smooth and fun to play around with. The fact that the level layouts are different every time really makes for a fresh approach on strategy and exploration in each gameplay session, and the ranking system along with the developer's commitment to constant free updates really gives us a breath of fresh air from the now prevalent times of paid DLC. And the quality of this game really shows, and it makes sense that the talented senior Bioshock developers are behind this masterpiece. So for the asking price of £13.49, US dollars I highly recommend this one. My final score for City of Brass is 9.5 out 
out of 10. Thanks for watching.